Just a reminder before today's programme that if you missed it, you should check out the last Doctor Who review, which covered the Series 12 finale, The Timeless Children. And also fans of Classic Who should check out the most recent unboxing of the collection set, Season 26, which is the final season of the Classic Era, as well as being the final season for Sylvester McCoy's Seventh Doctor. And now, here on AMTV, here on the Doctor Who Review, we review the most recent release, Another Lost Story, given a new lease of life. Hello guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome to a brand new video, and this time we're over at the Doctor Who shelf here in the games room because we're going to be looking at and reviewing The Faceless Ones. So this is the brand new 2020 release of the classic 1967 story. A little bit of context on this one I suppose, so this was originally broadcast between the 8th of April and the 13th of May 1967. On the whole it averaged about 7 million viewers, and it's the penultimate story of season Four, with Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor, companions being Ben, played by Michael Craze, Polly, played by Annika Wills, and Jamie, played by Fraser Hines. Now, uh, this has been animated, all six episodes. It's a six-part story. Episodes one and three still exist in the archives, but all six have been animated here. I'll get into the nitty-gritty of this set in a bit, but first, I think it's best to provide a little bit of context for those who maybe don't know as well about season four of Doctor Who, and just why it's so important and why it's so tragic that so many of the stories are lost. So season four of Doctor Who is a really interesting one and a very important one because it started with the first Doctor and ended with the second. We had the first regeneration. So the first two stories we had William Hartnell, who was sadly suffering from really ill health, who then became Patrick Troutman, who then took over. So story by story, first of all, you have the smugglers, which kicked off the season. Uh, four part story, sadly no episodes remain. Um, it hasn't been animated as of yet, however, I believe you can listen to the audio version. And it is also available as a Target book. And then you have The Tenth Planet, which was the first story to feature the Cybermen and the last to feature the First Doctor. A four-part story again. Episodes 1, 2 and 3 survive in the archives. Episode 4 does not. However, in 2013, the DVD was released and Episode 4 has been animated. Uh, which is great. There's also a Telesnap reconstruction as well, but this is a really great DVD release. Highly recommend that for any First Doctor fans in particular, as it's the last of his stories and is on DVD. Then, of course, you have the first of the Second Doctor, which is The Power of the Daleks. Now, as you, again, you can see, this has been animated. It's a six-part story. There are no episodes remaining in the archives for this one, which is a great, great shame. But this animated reconstruction is absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend giving this a watch if you haven't already. This came out in 2016. Uh, so you've got that one. Then you had The Highlanders, uh, which was a four-part story. Again, no episodes exist, but it is notable for introducing Jamie to the TARDIS team. And you can still listen to that today as an, either an audio or you can read the Target book. Then you have the four-part story, The Underwater Menace. Now this one, for the longest time, only episode three of four existed in the archives. And then in 2011, episode two was found. Now this release on DVD from 2015 it says includes the previously unreleased episode, which is true. However, aside from the two episodes that are intact, what's remaining is uh, two telesnap reconstructions, which it's a great shame they didn't animate this. There's a whole plethora of reasons as to why they didn't animate this or reasons why they think they didn't animate this. So it's a shame, but you know, it is what it is, but still, you know, a fun little story. And then next up you have the four part story, The Moon Base, which was the second story to feature the Cybermen. Um, it's a four-part story, only episodes two and four remain in the BBC archives, one and three are missing. However, in this DVD release from 2014, they did animate the two missing episodes, which is fantastic, because unlike the Telesnap reconstruction of The Underwater Menace, at least with this one, you've got the animated ones to watch. And it's a great story, The Moonbase, highly recommend it. And then following on from The Moonbase, you have the four-part story, The Macra Terror. Now this is... A recent animation, this came out uh, last year in 2019, it's a four part story, sadly none of the original episodes exist in the archive, this was animated from the ground up, and what's interesting is this was the first of the black and white animated stories to offer it in full colour as well. I've always had the mixed feelings on the colour ones, I get why they do it for like the American audiences and stuff, however, 
I prefer to watch my episode animations in black and white. I'm glad they have the option. So that's the Macro Terra. And then you come to the faceless ones, which is what we're talking about today. But before we do that, after the faceless ones, there is the Evil of the Daleks, which is the seven part finale. It hasn't been animated yet. Only episode two of Zevin exists in the archives. I really hope they animate it one day because I'd love to see that. But now let's get into the nitty gritty, which is this one, the faceless ones. So we're gonna do a swivel round of the camera and I will show you just how they've packaged this one. Okay, so the Faceless Ones, released in March of 2020. First of all, let's take a look at this cover art. And this is really nice. The text is very 1960s, if you like. I love this. It's a really creepy image of, like, the chameleon becoming the humans and stuff. You've got Patrick Trout down there. You've got the airport tower, the whole thing of the runway. A really nice colour, but I just really like this cover art, I've got to admit. And I was surprised to see this is three discs. Uh, usually these are one or two discs, but now on the back you've got a little description. And then you've got the bonus features as well. I'll talk more about that in a second, but if you take this out. Now, don't be alarmed because the this cover is what you get when you first open this. However, there is a reversible DVD cover that looks like this so that you can match it up to the rest of the uniform DVDs on your shelf, which I think is always a nice option to have. So you've got it. I have it like this. I just prefer it like this. Three discs. You've got the Patrick Chatton Year 66 to 69 and it's got the uniform spine which is great and again the blurb on the back is the same it's just more in that classic DVD uh, packaging style now three discs so on disc one you have the black and white animated episodes and bonus content now I'm glad they put this on first um, because this is how I watched it I watched all six episodes in the black and white animation it just feels truer to me and what's nice is this gives you the option when you boot up the menu you can either watch all six episodes as animations or you can watch six episodes but you can watch the original episodes one and three with the rest being the animations now that's how i prefer to watch them like when they first start releasing animations like with the invasion or the reign of terror for example i always prefer watching the real episodes if they're available so big fan of that if you want to see it in color disc two has the uh, color animated episodes and the other content as well and disc three is mainly the bonus content. The bonus content on this one is, um, I mean, compared to typical Doctor Who DVD stuff, it's a little lacking, I'd argue. I mean, yes, you've got like a sort of making of the animation, which is very interesting, especially if you're like interested in that field of animation. Um, aside from that, you get a trailer for the next animation release, which is gonna be Fear in the Deep, but it's very short and it doesn't really show you anything. Uh, you get to see remaining film clips from missing episodes that have survived or stock footage. It's just a very lackluster bonus content offering, if I've, if I've got to be honest. I mean, you're going to be paying £13 for this new or something like that, and I just would have expected a bit more bonus content. I do understand it's hard because this story is uh, nearly 45 years old. A lot of the original people who contributed to making it have now sadly passed on. But uh, I'm surprised I didn't do any, in, you know, interviews with the actors like you could have done with Fraser Hines and Annika Wills, they're still alive, or uh, Pauline Collins, for example. Do you know what I mean? There, there was many options, but they didn't go for it. And the Flyers, uh, you, there's the new Sophie Aldred book where Ace returns. I'm, I've got to say, I'm quite interested in reading that. And also the VR game, The Edge of Time, which some of you guys mentioned in the last Sunday catch-up. And don't fret, this does have a booklet. Now, it's like a sort of miniature... Uh, half size booklet but there's a lot of introductions and production notes which I think are very interesting so that was a good read for me and what's nice is oh look there you go you got your special features so you got the audio commentary so I guess that involves some of the original cast and crew you got the episode uh, reconstructions so you can watch a reconstruction version rather than animation you got surviving footage camera scripts the black and white presentation and on the back which I think is really nice you've got like all the production uh, credits like the cast members and you've also got information about the episode, uh, when it was first transmitted, where it was last transmitted, which I think is really cool, and approximately how many viewers it had as well. So, interesting that this uh, story in particular was last transmitted in Zambia, of all places, between the 11th of June and the 16th of July in 1973. So way into uh, John Pertwee's time, so it's just the same Zambia didn't return their film prints, but that is the booklet you get with it. So overall, in terms of presentation, this DVD is really nice. I adore, as I say, the cover, the, the art style, everything like that, the reversible DVD cover. As a package on the whole, I would have loved a few more uh, bonus features if possible, but I'm just honestly thankful to have this released at all. So we've got to be, we've got to be thankful for Small Mercies that this has come out. Uh, what else to say? Well, I'll tell you a bit about the story. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything because I highly recommend you watch it yourself. It's funny with the missing episodes because I feel when you just watch the odd one that survives, you don't get a full 
uh, picture of the story, obviously, and that can dampen your opinion. Perfect example with me is, I'm going to find it now, where is it, is with this one, The Enemy of the World. So for the longest time, only episode three of six uh, remained, but then we found them all. And as soon as I and many others watched The Enemy of the World for the first time, all six episodes, we all raved about it. We all loved it. So hopefully that would be the same for the faceless ones. But the animation, the story's actually really good. It's got a sort of like uh, youthful action to it of the time of the 60s. Pauline Collins is great um, as Sam Briggs. Although her Liverpool accent, having lived in Liverpool for six years, it's either the softest Scouse accent I've ever heard or it's just not that good. Um, I know TV times were different back then, but just thought I'd get that across. But it's a very interesting story. It's definitely not dull. I can see why they animated this. I wasn't bored, and that can happen sometimes with six part as they sort of drag in the middle. But no, I was very, very impressed. So should you pick up the faceless ones? If you're a Doctor Who fan, absolutely. It's another notch you can fill in the DVD collection where there's gaps. And obviously, we're getting Fury from the Deep later this year, hopefully, which will fill another gap. And I'm very excited for Fury of the Deep. However... If you're not so bothered about buying the DVD or if you're on the fence, you can always pick up a copy of the Target novelization. So this is the Target novelization of The Faceless Ones, written by the late, great Terence Dix. It's number 116 in the Doctor Who library. And the paperback edition that I've got here was released 20 years after the original transmission in 1987. I'm knocking down the DVD there. Uh, the story is pretty much the same. I haven't read this yet, and I probably won't now that I've just watched... Uh, the DVD, well not for a while, but the Target books sometimes are different from the TV ones, you know, they can take more liberties and stuff, but you can always pick that up and read it if you'd rather not spend the £13 to buy this uh, brand new, but for the sake of the animation teams who are reanimating these classic episodes, I highly encourage you to buy it just to give them the support and show that we want these gaps filled for our collections. But that is all for this review of Doctor Who and the Faceless Ones. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've already picked this up, if you're planning on picking it up. Did you get the DVD version like me, or did you go for Blu-ray, or did you even go for the Steelbook, which looked quite snazzy, I have to say. Let me know if you're going to pick up the Faceless Ones. Let me know your favourite Patrick Troughton story, your favourite Season 4 story. Comment all your favourite things Doctor Who. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. And until the next one, I will see you guys next time. Well, that does bring us to a close this evening on AMTV. We do hope you enjoyed the program, and please do keep your eyes open for brand new content that will be coming to you soon. Until then, have a very good week, and we hope that you join us again soon. Good night.